All right, so be careful. Sir. All right, uh, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, like it was said, I'm Rene Eichhorn. Um, I'm a software engineer working at Zalando. And recently, one of my projects there was working on React 18 and it's all its new, new features. And I know it's kind of a long title, uh, but I'm going to just start asking you, like, who of you uh, knows and uses React on a day-to-day -day basis? OK, that's good. And then the question is, who of you knows what SSR is? OK, that's nice. That's a, that's a very good starting point. <laughs> Uh, all right, so just as a quick uh, brief overview, I'm just going to do a short React 18 introduction, also for those that perhaps are not super into uh, the latest changes um, and also the changes that are relevant for streaming. Uh, I will then also go into like what actually streaming is. Uh, you probably have heard it in the context of Netflix, YouTube, and so on, but perhaps not in the context of React or like uh, browsers. Um, then I will also bring you a little case study of how we at Zalando are making use of streaming to deliver like a, a fast website. Um, and last but not least, uh, we will finally go through a bit of code and show like how it's actually working and how any one of you could also do it. So again, just a very short intro to React 18 and its new changes. Um, I'm trying to keep it brief, uh, but at this point also a shout out to the react.dev website. I think we even have a talk about this today, so if you want to have a more detailed overview, then I go to the docs. Um, so I'm just gonna mention a few really interesting changes. So the first thing is um, what I personally always refer to interruptible rendering. I think internally, probably the uh, React core team is gonna hate me for saying interruption, but <laughs> because they like to call it suspense. Um, but for me, at least as a non-native speaker, interrupting uh, sounds a bit more easy to grasp. So the idea is that if you look at the code, uh, what you might not know already is there's a function call to this react.use and you pass it a promise. And what truly happens in the background is that when you pass this promise to react, you are essentially telling it to stop rendering at this point, not continuing any further and React is then going to retry. It's going to reattempt rendering once this promise has been resolved. So in this case, uh, the, it's going to try uh, resolving after a second, and then it's actually going to render. And what that means, like what happens until the second is over, we will get to a bit later. Um, but that's the general idea of interruptible rendering, which was previously not possible like this. You had to do some kind of early return, right? Like return null or return some uh, loading spinners. Um, but this is changing, and we will go a bit more into detail on this later. Um, a super nice thing also is uh, prioritized rendering. So basically what you probably all know that JavaScript is mostly single-threaded, at least on the JavaScript engine side. And this can be sometimes a problem, right? Because you can imagine React has to do a lot of different things when it has to render your website. And sometimes it also means that all this work it has to do is block important interactions for customers. Perhaps React is busy rendering something, but the user is already pressing a button and nothing happens. Um, so what React did uh, in its internal rewrite is that it, instead of having this one huge function that runs and blocks your whole thread, it kind of splits everything into tiny little tasks and it puts it onto a so-called scheduler uh, with different priorities. So React, what happens when you have an on-click, for example, uh, React considers this as a more important update, and hence, any time it could move these tasks, tasks a bit uh, uh, forward in the queue, and hence, uh, your button click will, in the end, respond faster. And in fact, um, I also put some metrics here. Uh, luckily, in the talk before, we already uh, mentioned a bit about Core Web Vitals. So we have IMP, FID, and LCP here. Uh, for those of you that are not aware of any uh, Web Vitals at all, it's a more or less simple way to define performance as a number and just by using or making use of react 18 and uh, upgrading to the new apis thanks to this prioritized rendering you get really nice improvements uh, and these are uh, measured numbers of uh, like real customers at zalando uh, so that's kind of a nice thing for just upgrading um, then just a, for a few uh, worthy mentions um, React's now also able to do way better batching of state updates. So no longer you need to have like two set render as uh, two set states that will yield to two re-render attempts. Can be bad for performance, so this is luckily fixed. Um, 
And then there's also something called selective and uh, progressive hydration. So as you know, with server-side rendering, um, after the server's done, the browser still needs to hydrate your content. And the way we can do it now, especially with suspense, is that you can define special parts of your website that you want to have hydrated as fast as possible, um, which again, improves performance and making your website way more interactive uh, quicker. But now let's uh, really jump a bit into streaming. Um, again, you, you know streaming, right? You know it from Netflix, you know it from mostly, uh, maybe even lo loading images or videos. And the main idea here is that you don't want to download a five gigabyte video to start watching it, right? And you just don't want to wait. You want to just download the first two seconds, start watching while the rest is being loaded in the background. So now you might think, okay, uh, I mean, ideally your website is not gonna be <laughs> a few gigabytes big, um, but um, we're gonna go through why it still can help, like why this kind of streaming can help for HTML as well. Um, but for this, just as a brief intro, like how does it actually work? Like how can the browser do this and support the streaming is in its essence, right? A browser is just uh, taking data over the network, which is just some sort of binary data, most often BTF8 uh, encoded uh, text, which in the end is your HTML. And then internally there runs a tokenizer, there runs um, a parsing system, and in the end your uh, HTML DOM is being built. But when you are streaming, the key part here is that here you can actually see it on the left side, you kind of see incomplete and in fact even invalid HTML. You can see that there is a body tag that just never closes and there's also the HTML tag that never closes. So you, from the browser perspective, you don't know if there's some more content coming, if it's still being closed. But luckily, um, what that means for streaming is that if we stream this piece of content, even though it's incomplete, the browser is able to work on this. It's able to parse it, it's able to even display it or run scripts, load JavaScript and so on. So what the browser in the end truly sees internally in its tree is actually the right side, which is a valid and completed HTML. And when later more HTML comes in, it is just gonna add it to the existing tree, which makes it then possible to really show um, content slowly and progressively. Um, so now I want to go a bit more on a real world example, um, like how we do it at Zalando and on our website. Uh, so just as a brief intro, there in, uh, at Zalando we use an in-house framework called Rendering Engine. Um, just think of it as a kind of an internal Next.js-like thing, which uh, adds on top of React and um, adds a little bit of utility functions that try to make it as easy as possible to create your components. And what we did essentially is that these renderers, uh, as we call them, which are again just React components that have some sort of data dependency, like think of it as a product card that renders some visual content, but it also needs to fetch data from an API. And what we do is each of these renderers are being streamed individually. So just to make it more visual, so this is a very typical part of the website, um, not the whole, but just uh, one snapshot of it. And what you can see here is a campaign and what you see on top is some kind of uh, marketing content and image, some descriptions, and then afterwards you see a list of um, images. So now from a, if you look at this from a more technical perspective, um, you might know that for all of these content, you need to fetch data, right? It's not something static. Perhaps there are multiple APIs involved where you need to first fetch the data. So it's nothing static. So generating this piece of HTML is, takes some time. And in fact, there are different API calls involved that perhaps need different times. But at the same time, you want to deliver a really nice and fast experience for the customer. So what you want to have is that the first part, the upper part of, the, uh, of this snippet should be displayed as soon as possible. Like ideally, you don't want to wait for some uh, data for, let's say, this product here uh, in order to start streaming the content. Like you just want to have it as soon as possible. And again, the way we do this is that we have this concept of renderers and you can see it here, the red outline is one renderer and then each of these product cards is another one. And the way you can imagine it is that each of these pieces are streamed individually. So first you have the red content and then you start uh, streaming all those individual product cards. Um, so now with that being said, um, 
how can we actually make use of this with uh, suspense? Um, how, how is Fashion Store at Zalando doing it? And how can any one of you that is already doing SSR can also do it? And the key to this is really a component called suspense that you may or may not have used yet. Um, and together with this concept of interruptible rendering that I showed earlier, um, this is the experience you get. So let's make this again a bit more visual. So I have this very simple e-commerce type of uh, catalog page where you have some kind of uh, headline, you have some filters that you can apply, um, and then you have a lot of product cards. So on the left side, you see the code. It's kind of simple. You have a catalog component that is somehow fetching some sort of product list, which would be just a, an array of product IDs. Um, and then it just renders it inside a grid um, and then renders these product cards. Um, the key here, what you can see is there is um, actually a suspense component wrapping this product card renderer. Um, and this is a very important uh, part of it. And you can also see again, this react use function being called here. In this case, it's just use, um, but it's just using the react use function. And again, there's a get product list and the get product data function being used here, which you can imagine it's a, it's a normal uh, fetch that's calling some APIs and in the end retrieve some data. And if you look at this from this code, it almost looks like it's kind of a bit like an await would work like, right? If imagine you had an async function, the way you would do it is you would await the get product data call. Um, so it's, it's very similar to that. And what you also notice is there's not in this code, there's no logic that actually checks if data is available already. There's no if is fetching, there's no if loading and then render some, uh, render some uh, loading spinners or something. Um, this is all done, uh, this is all works out of the box in React 18 with suspense. And just to make it more visible, um, the way it's gonna look like when you load, uh, of course this is highly highly slowed down, but this is essentially what happens is that you first see those this headline of catalog and those filters, and then you start seeing those product cards being popping in uh, right in order uh, whenever the data for these piece of components are ready. So there are lots of different examples uh, in, real, in real world applications that could benefit from this. This could be also some sort of like dashboard um, a website and each of these cards would be maybe some sort of graph that is fetching some data that perhaps even takes some time to fetch. Uh, so this is pretty, pretty nice. But then I mentioned how there's no loading checks or anything, no loading spinners, nothing. And the nice part about this is that you actually doing this and changing this behavior of this loading is kind of simple. So let's look at this example here. So there's actually just one single line that has changed, um, which is in the suspense boundary, in the suspense component, you see a component uh, prop called fallback where we pass some sort of shimmering placeholder component. What that placeholder looks like is you, what you can see on the right side. Uh, I'm sure most of you have seen this uh, at YouTube, Instagram, or wherever, wherever this, these kind of placeholders make it a bit, it, it makes it so that the customer perceives that the website is a bit faster because it's not just blank, but you see something and then content is slowly popping in. Um, so, and with this single change, we completely changed our loading behavior without actually changing the product card component itself. The product card component stays as it is. It's still fetching data um, or specifying which data it needs and rendering the content. So it's really the, the parent component that decides how is the uh, loading logic gonna be. And this is also the interesting part because wherever you put the suspense boundary is gonna affect like where, um, how your loading behavior is gonna be. Perhaps you don't want to have one a uh, placeholder for each of these cards. Maybe you want it for each row. Maybe you want just one placeholder for everything. And all you have to do is you need to change where you put the suspense boundary. And again, there's no need to change your product card itself. So that's kind of nice uh, way of organizing the resp re responsibility of loading. And the way it's gonna look like when you actually load the page, again, it's a bit slowed down, is you first see the placeholders and then those placeholders are slowly being replaced by uh, actual content. And now the, the thing is that we still have to keep in mind that this is all done server-side rendering. So both those placeholders that you can see are rendered on the server, but also the actual content is being uh, 
server-side uh, rendered, which means that the, the browser is first streaming one part of the website, which includes those placeholders, and then later, uh, every couple of milliseconds, ideally, uh, there's a new content coming in and React is automatically replacing this. Um, another thing really worth to mention here is that, as you can see, there's also this filters button here on top. <clears throat> so the cool thing also here is that even when all those product cards are still loading, they're not done yet, it's actually interactive. So your filters where this filter button that perhaps has some sort of um, on-click handler, this would start working already, considering you already have JavaScript loaded, of course. But this is really the, the nice part. So especially if you have a longer list, like every, the page becomes interactive as it loads. And this is also what they re refer to as uh, progressive um, hydration. And actually, in fact, also what React internally does is it prioritizes things a bit, or it tries to automatically prioritize things. So again, if the user clicks on this filter button, it's gonna consider this as a much more important interaction as, for example, showing this product card, um, which then again makes the website just feel much more responsible, uh, responsive. So with this said, um, just a, a quick catch up. Um, so one thing, what we hopefully learned is first of all, uh, upgrading to React 18 is very nice in terms of performance. You don't even need all these changes with suspense. Just by upgrading, you really run into uh, performance uh, boosts. Of course, it depends a bit on your size of the website, but like I showed in the metrics, uh, something measurable. And uh, if you haven't upgraded yet, do it. I mean, it's really more or less free performance uh, boost, so uh, I can highly recommend it. And another thing is that streaming or implementing streaming is really not super complicated, especially with this React use function. Um, all you have to do is, again, place those suspense boundaries uh, wherever you want, and then you have streaming implemented. There's no big change that you need to do on the server. It's literally just the code that I showed you. Um, and with that, we can also really play a bit with priority and make sure that important content, such as content above the fold, is loaded as soon as possible, while perhaps other content is a bit uh, prioritized less and loaded a bit later. Uh, so yeah, so that 